Tyler Perry is supposed to be a Christian. If that man is a Christian, he can be a cross-dresser at the same time. At the same time. The Bible says you cannot get sweet and bitter water from the same fountain. Give me the book of Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy chapter 22. I don't hate Perry. But who is he? He ain't Jesus. That's right. Hallelujah that. That's right. Let's hear the Bible talk. In Deuteronomy chapter 22. You people got to get out of your mind that you love celebrities more than God's word. Amen. Who in the world is a celebrity above this book? Yes. It ain't a man on the planet above the book. Go ahead. Talk to me. That's right. Not a man on this planet above that book. Oh, no. And that's why people take great offense. Well, look at where he came from. He came from poverty. I don't care. <laughs> Amen. I don't care if you came from a cocoon. <laughs> There's a law here. Preach it, brother. There's a law. Go ahead. Never mind where you came from. Where are you going? Amen. Young boys, look up to these men. That's true. I don't want no young man think it's all right to put on his mama wig, put on his mama lipstick, Put on his mama heels. Go ahead. Because Perry do it. Listen at the Bible. In Deuteronomy chapter 22 and at verse 5. Listen. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. A woman is feminine. You ain't got no business acting like a man, talking like a man, walking like a man, dressing like a man. That's right. When I say a woman, I shouldn't get her mistaken for Paul. Mm. Amen. You're a woman. You're feminine. You conduct yourself like a woman. The man is masculine. The woman is feminine. Yeah. Anyone didn't know that? Yeah, you, you didn't know that? Yeah. You, <laughs> you forgot, didn't you? Yeah, the, the, the woman, she's feminine. feminine. But to tell you, you see a lot of women. Some of the women is like saying, what's up? What's up? What's going on? You know, hey, you going to hang out? I mean, they grabbing like they got what, what men got. That's true. What happened to our sisters? That's right. That got you sitting with one leg east, with one leg west. You mothers, get back to your post and teach your daughters. Get your house right. If you're going to take the time to have a baby, then love that baby and teach it the way it should be. Am I right, I say? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is old fashioned preaching. Oh, yes. Years ago, if a man, a young boy came to your house, he took his hat off on the porch. He took his hat. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Is, is Claudine there, ma'am? Uh, all right, you come on in. And if he come in, he ain't just flopped in your chair. That's right. He stood there. That's right. Until Mr. or Mrs. Uh, Gillicuddy says, all right, you may sit down, young man. And he feared your daddy. That's right. Your daddy looked at him like a buzzard over a caucus. That's right. You know why? See, back then, men was real protectors of the house. These sick men sleep with their own daughters. This is a sick society. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? So morals and basic common sense have left society. And what structure is helping to push morality out? Church. Isn't that, isn't that strange? Church is a contributing factor to the madness because preachers are saying, well, we got to resort to other tactics to uh, get members, to increase membership. So what are preaching doing? They're having raffle tickets. They're bringing celebrities in the church to rap. They're hosting parties, yeah. hosting half-naked banquets. Did you know banquets is not for the church? For the church. Banquets is what you've done in your past life. That's right. There's no church supposed to be hosting a banquet when you're born again. According to the Bible, that's your past life. First Peter Give me the book of Peter. 
First Peter chapter 4. Follow me in your Bible, you half naked gown wearers. First Peter chapter 4. You half naked Christian sparkling gown wearers. That's right. That's the, is this your past life? Here you got the bishop wife come out with a gown cut deep as my jacket, her naked back all out, bare arms all out, split from the ankle all the way up. Lips look like Jezebel. Go Got ahead. somebody else's eyelashes on and somebody else's hair she bought from Walgreens. Amen. Bishop wife. Bishop wife. And he walking with her with a sense of pride. <laughs> sense of pride. What is so proud about your wife looking like Jezebel, looking like someone that walked the street? Mm. Why are your wife advertising her breast? Her breast supposed to be yours. Yeah. Why are you not ashamed that other men see it? Mm. You call that sexy. That's whorish. Go ahead. Preach it, brother. There ain't nothing sexy about advertising your body parts. Preach it. Preach it. Am I right, I said? Go ahead. That's not sexy no more, is it manly? You young men got your pants hanging down, showing your drawers like you a male prostitute. Oh, yeah. Pull your pants up. Go ahead. A real man don't advertise his butt. Amen. Why you want to uh, think of it? Here you a guy from the hood, man. Please, help me. Why do you want other dudes to look at your butt? <laughs> Amen. Look, I'm from the hood, and when I came from the hood, Jack, mm, 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 we, we mixed it up. Yeah. It wasn't none of us walking around with our pants up. Say, say. Yeah, you walk around, claim you tough, advertising your booty, like you making a booty call like a male hoe. That's right. You strolling like a man, but got your butt out like a hoe. Go ahead. Can't you make up your mind? Amen. Preach it, brother. Am I right? Go ahead. Strolling like a man and advertising your butt like a hoe. Yeah. Even a dog got a tail and he dropped his tail to hide his private parts. Go ahead. You're not a dog. Stop advertising your tail, you fool. Go ahead. Preach it. And then you knock up a girl and you have a little boy and you raise him to be like you. He's seven years old, got little Timberland boots on, a little Buster Brown Timberland looking boots, <laughs> and got his little pants hanging down. And he calling women B I T C H S. That's true. And you address your little son, this is my little pimp. Have you lost your mind? Do you know what a pimp is? A pimp is a womanizer and a woman abuser. So yet here you are so foolish, you answer to two pitiful titles. Pimp and dog. Yeah. You mean to tell me your freak and say, what's up dog, and you answer? Yeah. A dog is a garbage eater. Amen. Your friend said, yo, what's up, pimp? Hey, what's up? That's a womanizer. Yeah. So your children learn how to call women dogs, pimps, and when they get older, that's exactly where they're going to treat them. That's right. Straighten up, young man. That's right. Pull your pants up. Your pants up. Stop advertising your drawers. Yeah. Stop being a follower, doing what everybody else in the neighborhood is doing. That don't mean it look intelligent. It doesn't look intelligent, it looks horrible. Amen. I remember when they first started this, they only wore them when then the under, the pant, the shorts, the underwear, the waistband was up high. And then all of a sudden, these guys' pants started getting lower and lower. And until I started seeing them all the way down and the entire butt cheek out. Now this show you how stupid you are. You put your whole pants down and you put on a belt. Now, you, do you look at yourself when you be walking? You got your pants below your butt cheeks and a belt on and you walking. And walking. You walking because your pants is about to run away from you. And you young sisters, Go ahead. how are you proud to walk with a boy? 
who's showing his booty. Amen. Let's see how he act if you show yours. Yeah. You, he'll be ready to fight every man out there. Oh, yeah. You young men, straighten up. I'm advertising your fruity balloons and your hands. That's right. And your unwashed drawers. Amen. Am I right? Amen. You walk inside of a job, who you think gonna hire you? Pants hanging down, shirt hanging out with a necktie on. <laughs> uh, shirt out, pants down. Uh, I, I, want, I want to call, um, uh, is, is it John Cunningham? Cunningham coming in? <laughs> That's right. Have a seat, Mr. Cunningham. Mr. Cunningham, sit down. Yo, what's up? <laughs> his shoulders this way, his head <laughs> that way. <laughs> so, Mr. Cunningham, why do you think we should hire you? Well, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Your first words to him was, do you know what I'm saying? You ain't said nothing. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And you ain't said nothing. Go ahead, brother. I got to teach our young men. The streets are killing you. You are following any and every weak, filthy trend that degrades your humanity. We have become an embarrassment to God. That's right. And now God has implemented his word to correct in us what is not straight. That's right. Now you look at society. They, these brothers will shoot you for the stupidest thing. Hey, you and some guys is arguing over the girl and the girl done knocked all of y'all up. She done knocked up all four of you. <laughs> and she's sitting somewhere in the corner just looking at you. <laughs> Telling you, fight for me, fight for me. And all four of you about to kill each other. Yeah. And the thing about it, she don't belong to none of you. You know why? None of y'all married to her. Married to her. <laughs> How did you get this ignorant? That the rims on your car is more precious to you than buying food to put in the mouths of your baby. Amen. Your priorities are backward. And some of you sisters, I feel sorry for you because the choices you make, you select these things that spill their rotten seed in you. Go ahead, brother. And your child come out just like the thing you don't want. That's right. And now you're still dealing with him indirect. Because your child's one of them little acting devils. <laughs> That's true. And then every time the child is with the father, the father trash you. Then the, and now when the child come back, you got to undo the sick way he think because his crazy father can't stand the mother. Yeah. Are you listening? See, this is not taught in church, man. You too busy jumping and shouting and giving money. <laughs> and walking the street grinning, giving out flyers for some religion. You know Jesus? You, you, you know Jesus today? You don't know him. That's right. Go ahead, gosh. You don't know him. Go ahead, brother. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Go ahead. Amen. Listen at this. 1 Peter chapter 4 and at verse 3. Everybody all right? Yeah. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, son. 1 Peter chapter 4 and at verse 3. Yes. For the time past the time of our life. When? The time past of our life. So the scripture is going to deal with the, the things we've done in our past as sinners, mm -hmm. ungodly people. All right. May suffice us to it have wrought the will of the Gentiles. To wrought the will of the uncircumcised. When we walked in lasciviousness. We walked in lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is extreme lust. Uh huh. Lust. All right. Excess of wine. Oh, out there drinking. It's terrible to see a drunken man. And it's terrible to see a drunken woman. Mm -hmm. To see a drunken woman, her voice get deep like a man. Hmm. 
all out there in the street. What are you talking about? Leave me alone. Some of you brothers, man, you drink up all your money. You can't. You won't even put food in the refrigerator. Wife got to argue with you. Wife trying to do right, want to get a life right with God. She's scared to even let you in the house. Listen, anytime you get under an influence of anything and it make you act worse than an animal, you don't need that thing. That's right. When you get so messed up that you will argue with a telephone pole. <laughs> uh, amen. You argue with a telephone pole. I often think of a fellow that I grew up with. His name was Nate. But you know, in the hood, we got all type of short names. So we called him Ghost. <laughs> Ghost was big, too, man. Tall brother like Huey. But he muscular and whatnot. And so trash day was set out. And somebody set the refrigerator out. And Nate, I heard this noise. It may be like 2 or 3 in the morning, man. I was still home. I looked out my window. And there was Nate. He bumped up against the next door neighbor's refrigerator that was out there for trash. You know, and, and, oh, he had it out with the fridge. He, had, he told the fridge, Wait, get, who you think you looking at? Man, look, you better get out the way because, you know, I ain't walking around you. <laughs> he pushed the refrigerator and the weight of the refrigerator came back and hit Nate in the chest. And Nate went back. Nate said, oh, no. Oh, no. Man, Nate went hitting that refrigerator, boom, 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 knocked it down, and then stomped it, told the refrigerator, get out! <laughs> Look at yourself in your past life and see where you that crazy. <laughs> now, I relate this to you, brothers and sisters, because in churches today, have you noticed sin is being downplayed more and more and more? And what the preachers are saying, there's nothing wrong with doing this, that, or the other as long as you do it in moderation. The, Bible's plain, the Bible talk plain. It says wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And he that is deceived thereby is not wise. I want this to be good for you drunken Christians. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Excess of wine. This is the past life. Past life. What else? Revelings. Revelings. Banquetings. Oh, in our past life, where were we going? Banquetings. Where were we going? Banquetings. Past life. That's supposed to be your past life, not now. Our sisters in church coming in church with half naked evening gowns and our brothers coming in looking like a bunch of pimps. That's right. I don't manicure my nails. For what? That's right. I'm a man. Amen. I don't need no nails like an armor all. <laughs> no. I'm a man, brother. Amen. I ain't worrying about that I got calluses. I'm a working man. That's right. My hands ain't soaking in some palm olive. No. <laughs> huh? That's right. Remember that commercial they used to have when they're coming up? That's right. Man was soaking in palm olive, and she said, you're soaking in it right now. He jerked that hand out of there. <laughs> Our men are becoming more and more feminine. This has got outrageous. Our men now want to wear their hair like the female. And our women want to wear their hair like the man. What is going on? Our men want to wear pumps. That's right. Uh, That's right. Our men want to wear pumps like women, want to wear pumps and carry little pocketbooks and all. What's the matter with That's you? That's right. And you look at society are making clothes so you can't tell the difference who is the man or the woman. Right. Go back to Deuteronomy. Back in Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. Says. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Our sisters, I should be able to look at a sister and know it's a woman. Amen. Amen. When I come home to my wife, I should not think uh, that it's the plumber in my house. That's right. Amen. Amen. And when I come home, she should not think that there's some girl who rung the got the wrong house. Where's my husband? Right. 
I mean, what you look like, Pastor Jennings, coming to the pulpit switching? You see this hard preacher over the television, and then when you see me in person, I come in the door. <laughs> yeah, something's wrong. Am I right, folks? Amen. Amen. I'll be like, man, there ain't no Pastor Jennings. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Hallelujah. But today, a man can be in the pulpit like that, and people will look over and say, Well, he's just a humble Christian. It ain't that much humility in you. No, no. God made man in his image, and if God made the man in his image, it ain't nothing feminine about God. That's right. Am I right, I say? Amen. See, a lot of people don't like this kind of preaching because they may have gay sons, gay brothers, gay sisters, and gay relatives. I got gay relatives, but I don't care. I'm going to preach it. Preach it. I don't care if I woke up in the sun and, uh, 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 on a morning and all four of my sons' hair was replaced with daisies. <laughs> I'm going to preach it. That's right. And I'm going to pull your daisies out by the roots, too. <laughs> you got to stop bargaining because your family is guilty of biblical sin. Stop compromising. Stop condoning it. Call a spade a spade. Love God enough that if your family is wrong, you tell them you're wrong. That's right. That's right. And if they don't like it, that's their problem. Go ahead. You mothers, you can't say, well, Pastor Jennings, that's my son. Is he a faggot or not? That's right. And if he is, call a spade a spade. Is she a dyke or not? If she is, then tell Butch to straighten up. Amen. Mama not a Butch. Daughter shouldn't be Butch. That's right. Father's not Tiny Tim. Daughter's son shouldn't be Tiny Tim. Being gay is a spirit. That's what it is. It's, it's not just learned behavior, it's the spirit. Because the father can be straight and the mother can be straight and the spirit of the devil can convert your son and daughter. That's why the world need God in your house. Yeah. And that's why the false prophets hate me. They don't want God in your house so the devil can have free will with your house. Let's take our house back and get God in there. Bring God back in your house. Stop letting your children bring this rat trash in your house. Doing what they want in your house. Man, when I came up, my father made a plane. You can't obey the rules of this house, then get out and get your own. And then you young people say, my mama told me that, but she don't love me. No, it's tough love. Listen, young man and young woman, it's common sense. If you work at a job and you ain't got sense enough to do what the job tell you, the man going to tell you, you find work somewhere else. Oh, yeah. What she going to say? My employer don't love me. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a nut. Uh, my employer don't love me. Mm. No, you the one ain't wanted to cooperate. All right, here you got a mother, and there's some of these women single, working hard to raise one, two, three, and four children because the man they married, she thought he was what she wanted and found out he was nothing but a bum, worthless, who just wanted to live off her. Yeah. And ain't no man want to marry a woman, and uh, ain't no woman want to marry a man and got to raise him like he's a child. That's right. I often teach our men, don't need to talk to no sister about we us and you ain't got I right. Amen. Before you talk about we and us, get yourself right first. Yeah. 
If you ain't got money, you can't even afford to buy a roll of paper towels. Why would you try to make a baby? Then the baby got to suffer because they got a father who's too lazy and more worried about smoking and drinking and gambling and running the street than raising him and teaching him and instructing him to be what God wanted him to be. Go ahead. So you young women, stop looking at the car he drives. And the money he give you. Yeah. And the cologne he wear when he don't wash. Go ahead. Go ahead. Stop Go ahead. looking at how good he perform in bed. Go ahead, brother. See, is he fit to be a husband? Because he make a baby, that don't mean he's fit to be a father. That don't mean he's fit to be a husband. So, well, Pastor Jennings, I want to know, do he love me? That's the first wrong thing you want to know. The first thing you should want to know first, do he love God? Second, do he love himself? Yes. Bible said, love your neighbor as yourself. Self. If the man don't love himself, he going to slap you from one end of the room huh. to the other. Amen. Preaching. A man can't love you until he loves himself. Amen. A man can't love you right until he loves God. And you ain't no man because you beat some woman. You're weak, good for nothing, coward. Go ahead. A man that beat a woman is weak. A man that beat a woman is a coward. A man that beat a woman rejects the counsel of God. That's right. Well, I gotta put my woman back in check. Really? Well, then God's going to put you in check. Oh, yes. Because what judgment you use upon her, the God of heaven is going to end up using upon you. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. It takes a real man to follow holiness. Yes, sir. We believe in rebuilding the man. Remember in the 70s, the $6 million man, what they say? We can rebuild him. Rebuild him. Make him faster. <laughs> well, here's the Bible comes to rebuild you inside and out. Oh, yeah. Rebuild the way you think. Rebuild the way you walk. Rebuild the way you talk. Rebuild the way you feel. Because all this junk that's in us, we got from some fake man-made religion, and then we took it under the title of Christian. And then find out later we never began started serving Christ. Yeah. Are you listening? Amen. What did he say? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Woman! Stop looking like a dude. Mm. Stop sitting like a man. Stop walking like a man. Stop talking like a man. That's right. Get them pants off of you. Pants. Get them hot pants off of you. Stop walking outside in a, in a what they call a wife beater. Mm -hmm. Only outside now what they're wearing is tights. And you can see the skin straight through them. True. Stop sending your daughters out with this mess on. Put some clothes on you. Christian half naked out here looking like Jezebel is a disgrace. Yeah. Well, Pastor Jen is in my church. My bishop says, come as you are. He wants you to. Mm. Mm -hmm. He wants you to come as you are. So he can see what you have. That's right. And then he can say the Lord work in mysterious ways. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, Williams.